Welcome to Attention Retention with Jackie McManus, your source for the latest trends in transportation recruitment and retention. Welcome to Attention Retention. I'm Jackie McManus, CEO and founder of KJ Media. We are a recruitment advertising agency specializing in talent attraction, optimizing hiring processes, and driving efficiency to help grow your workforce in the trucking industry. And on this show today, we dive into the world of recruitment, retention, and recognition by interviewing industry leaders and experts as we unpack the strategies, challenges, and successes surrounding these three crucial aspects of the workforce. And this week, I am so excited to be joined by John Hickey, Corporate Director of Recruiting and Retention for the McCoy Group. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Jackie, for having me on. Um, appreciate the opportunity to come on and talk about our business and, and really the industry with you. I, I will share one story with you. Last night, um, coming home from a baseball game, I have um, two sons, 13 and 14 years old, and normally they're not too interested in what dad does for work. But um, during my conversation on the way home, I just mentioned I was doing a podcast today. And so I, I picked up some credibility um, with my teenage <laughs> sons at home, and they, they were wondering what time it was going to happen if they could get out of school to listen. But um, nonetheless, they're, they're at school, I believe. And, and But I did gain a few points. So so thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. And um, hopefully they'll be the first to like, share our post once it goes, our podcast once it goes live. I'm sure they will. Excellent. Yeah. So, John, you bring almost two decades of experience in transportation and talent management. And now with the McCoy Group and been there for a couple of years, has five different companies under their umbrella, employing over 4,000 employees. And today I'm really excited to go through the three R's and how McQuay Group uses its innovative strategies, technology, candidate-centric approach, and cross-functional opportunities to drive your recruitment and retention success. It is no small feat managing those five different companies within this industry. Um, but before we dive in, could you Share with the audience a little bit about yourself and your journey becoming the corporate director of recruiting for the McCoy Group. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I graduated college, and I'll date myself a little bit, but in 2002. So I um, graduated from Western Illinois University in, in Macomb, Illinois, and it was right after the attacks of uh, terrorist attacks of 9-11. So I, I did not have a, I'll say, a desire necessarily to get into transportation, but it was one of the few industries hiring at the time. And so I, I took kind of a proactive uh, management role in Minneapolis and, and got into an organization named FedEx Ground, large organization. Very grateful for that opportunity as it provided me, you know, a pathway into the industry, but also provided me a lot of training, um, kind of cross-functional training that let me get a, a, a sense of, you know, on-car activity and transportation, preload operations, um, contractor interactions, dealing with people, and uh, during the time, I really, I really fell in love with the business and the industry, and enjoyed most uh, my work uh, connecting with people, you know, and trying to help people advance their careers or, or land employment or move on. Um, and so, um, through my time in the business, I've, I've worked for um, FedEx Ground, Warner Enterprises, and and then now here with the McCoy Group, where we have, as you alluded to, five uh, different business units in our organization. Two of them directly in the transportation field. Um, and one, one's called Food Liner, which is a bulk uh, food hauling company, 100% tanker. So a lot of uh, flour, starches, things of that nature. And then Quest Liner, which is our, our chemical uh, bulk hauling component um, within our group and all in about 1,300 drivers uh, within our organization. So, you know, I've had a variety of roles as I, as I kind of think back, um, you know, during different, different times. So I've been on, again, on that preload uh, doc environments. I've been an on-car supervisor. I've been an office administrator, an HR professional, and and uh, and in all those uh, lines, I always had like a retreating element to it. So um, definitely a business that I like. And you know, I, I think about starting back um, after the the terrorist attacks of 9/11 and and how our industry, you know, survived and and was really critical during that time. And and now, you know, not too long ago, um, seems like yesterday, but you think back to COVID-19 and the, the pandemic, you know, in our industry was one 
that became very critical uh, to so many in terms of transportation. And so, you know, I, I think at 20 years in, and, and hopefully I got another 20 to go, um, love the business, love the industry. You know, I, I think of the um, other things I maybe enjoy about it is the competitiveness of the environment and, and really the stability of it. You know, when you think of those two major events, the fact that, you know, our industry really drove uh, the economy and, and helped the world um, is, is pretty impressive. And, and for me, a reason, you know, many people should consider uh, the, the transportation traffic supply chain space as a, as a potential career for them. Absolutely. And I, I just want to I do echo that with my journey. I know we, we spoke briefly before we pressed the record button, but 17 years ago, I joined a, a, a truck driver staffing company in 2008, you know, right as the financial crisis was was in full swing. And that company did, did pretty well in being able to supply truck drivers to companies that were still moving freight. And then again, 2020. Um, and I remember I had some friends that called me and said, okay, now I get it. Now I understand why you're in trucking, right? Coming from a family that is outside of the industry, um, there was little education about the importance of the industry. And that's one of the things that I'm passionate about is educating the next generation about coming into this great industry we have because it's essential. Um, it's not going away anytime soon. If anything, we're, we're adopting technology to enhance it. So um, really excited to have you on and, and happy here that we share the same passion and got bit by the trucking bug, if you will, um, a couple of years ago. So let's dive right into recruiting. Um, <clears throat> what have you found to be some of the more successful tactics as you look at the overall recruiting landscape in attracting talent? Yeah, it's changed a lot in 20 years. You know, I think of, uh, you know, when I first got into recruitment, you, you'd post your job on whatever platform you really wanted to, and you'd get an abundance sea of candidates and you'd, you'd take your top 10 and, and you'd pick and choose and, and you could, I'll say, take your time to, to reply to candidates or engage with them. And so for us, you know, we really try to be, um, fast. So we think about speed, um, in terms of any of our posting processes, we want to be able to, to get that content, that information in front of the right audience, uh, at a quick amount of time. So I guess where I'm going with that is really on the digital side. You know, we've, we've made a lot of strides here in the last uh, two years with the McCoy group in terms of our, our branding and our social media presence. Um, when I think of LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, digital platforms, you know, and then, you know, my cell phone's right next to me here. Anything we do, we always try to make sure that we're smartphone friendly. Um, you know, we still want to be able to take an application um, in a lot of variety of ways, but we really want to be able to produce that content and get that visibility out because most of our applicants, right around 85%, um, actually apply through their phone. So, you know, we try to do a lot of the digital space. And then, you know, when I think of our 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 footprint, we have right around 120 locations in 40, 40 some states. So, you know, some of our areas, there may not be as much popularity in the digital content or digital world. So, you know, we still, we can't be closed minded to a billboard or a newspaper ad or AM, FM radio for that matter. So we really try to be um, diverse and nimble in terms of our approach of getting our, our content in front of the right audience. And then we try to be very measured. You know, so when we put an ad out, um, we don't put an ad out and walk away from it. It's one of those things that, you know, our team and lucky to be surrounded by a really talented group of recruiters. We'll put ads out and we're constantly measuring the return, you know, of, of what it's getting. And if we get, you know, we don't want to overreact, but we don't want to underreact either. So, so if we feel we're not getting, I'll say the clicks uh, that we want to see or the visibility we want to see, we'll, we'll change it up. We'll change up the day, the time the platform, whatever that may be. And then we're also going to measure, you know, is that click turning into an apply? Um, and, you know, make sure we're really investigating the return in terms of where we're putting our, our message. Because, you know, we started off talking about five different business units. We're in the same space, but they're all very different in terms of the talent that we, we need to have. And then altogether, we have 35 uh, classifications within our group. So, you know, we can't promote, I'll say, maybe a driving job, or a diesel technician job the way we would uh, a sales representative or a parts counter person. Um, they just, those folks manage their careers in different spaces. So um, that's an ongoing battle for us. And, and, you know, we really just, again, the, the, our, 
I'll say what we've had traction is because of our our ability to measure, you know, the return on the investments we make into certain platforms. You said two really important things there. Um, lead to speed is is something that I, I often talk about as far as once a candidate, whether a driver, diesel technician, um, you know, other hourly roles applies to your company, uh, there's been a mindset historically in the old way of thinking of taking their time to reach back out to that candidate. And in today's world, there's actually a new stat that if you don't reach out to that candidate within five minutes, the likelihood of them being hired drops like 40, 50 percent. Right. Um, and there's a lot of ways to combat that because obviously, you know, recruiters may be busy on the phone or you know, there's other things that are happening. But automation in some capacity can can assist with that. But lead to speed is such a critical aspect of it. Um, and also managing your where you're getting the return. There's some keywords, there's some headlines that resonate with certain demographics in certain locations where it may not somewhere else. And so the set it and forget it mentality has, has caught, you know, certainly gone out the window. And it was in the, in the world of how do we be proactive, not overreact, but proactive in what we're advertising, where we're advertising, where we're getting best of returns. And I know for us as an agency, there are some platforms, they do phenomenal for some companies in certain markets. And in some markets, they don't. And so it's it's managing delicately that media mix to make sure that you're still hitting the top line KPIs on top of the funnel. Um, now, with all of the types of advertising your company does, you know, across the multiple umbrella companies, how do you stand out and differentiate McCoy Group and this company to stand out as an attractive employer? Yeah, no, um, but just to add one thing, kind of piggyback off one of your comments there. So, you know, most candidates, at least in, in most of our classifications, they're applying for more than one job at a time. So if we are not fast and responsive, you know, and, and someone is just quicker than us, even if they have a uh, a less attractive opportunity, but they're more responsive. You know, they they may end up landing the candidate. So we that's really why we push hard and try try to be very responsiveness and something to to you know help us in the twenty four seven world that recruiting is. Is we we've embraced automation. You know, we're getting um, better with digital and, and and bots, chat bots, and things of that nature to try to drive quality. You know, we'd rather have that human interaction and talk to the candidate. And when we will, we'll always follow up on any. Um, bot related traffic that we have, but to try to enhance the quality side of it, we'll have what we'll call, say, knockout questions or some of those common questions where people can ask a bot. You know, you think of on the driver side, is it um, is there a, a, a rider policy per se, or if it's a mechanic side, is there weekend work required for said positions? And so we can, you know, help kind of narrow the scope a little bit, really for our benefit, but also the candidate's benefit, where they can go, hey, I'm going to move on to the next you know, a potential employer because they're, they're a better fit because I need this or the other thing. Um, and then, like I said, on the human element side, we always follow up with those people that have called in and engaged with any of our automated technologies because we want to make sure, one, they got the right answer, they understood the answer, and, you know, maybe it's a timing thing. Maybe it's a really high-end candidate, and it's, hey, you know what, I, in, in a year or in six months, I could work every other weekend, but right now I can't. Um, mm-hmm. That may be somebody we, we muscle away for a later date. Um Go back to your question about, you know, how we stand out. You know, we, we talk about it a lot. Um, and to me, we refer to it as, as uh, you know, value proposition. You know, what what is better here than it is somewhere else? And, and so we, we think of where we find our talent. And if we're getting talent that's currently employed and maybe employed with our competition or maybe not, maybe in a different industry, what what is the benefits of coming, you know, uh, to the transportation industry? So that will handle maybe a little different. You know, when I think of, uh, and I don't want to talk negatively of other industries, but the stability within the supply chain and traffic world is, is as good as anywhere. It just is. It's it's right there with healthcare and other things where, you know, people are going to get sick. People got to get goods from point A to point B. So I think, you know, we market some of those things for maybe the people outside of our space. But people that may be working for our competition, what I would tell them is, you know, and this sounds salesy, but it is true. You know, we have something for everybody at the McCoy Group. We just do, when I think of the five business units, 125 locations, um, 35 classifications, we have a, a 
second to none track record in terms of uh, folks that have come into this company and are now division vice presidents. So it's it can be as simple as career path and growth, and you can see it. Like I'll, I'll bring people in, and, and even within recruiting, you know, we've built an org chart that has a career path within our department, and and we're not an upper out organization. You know, I'll say that as well. I, it, it's it's one of those things. If you want to come in and stay at a certain position, we're good with that. We'll, we'll celebrate that. We're going to ask you to be really good, work real hard um, at what you do. But if you want to climb, those opportunities are here, and we have those conversations. Um, you know, in fact, I just did a performance review with somebody on my team uh, this week, and one of my questions to them was, what could come up that would make you consider leaving? And um, they really, they couldn't give me a great answer, which I loved. I was like, that's good. That means we're, okay. we're communicating, yeah, we're exactly. communicating the opportunities, we're being good listeners, uh, we're putting them in, in positions that bring them job satisfaction. You know, so I, I think I, I, I put a lot of emphasis on a career path and opportunities, but then, you know, the basic stuff, we have a full, um, you know, benefit package, I think in retirement, you know, we want our people, the team here to, to invest in their future and, and help them go to retire. We've enhanced our PTO packages. You know, we've tried to really invest in, in the development of our staff. We have tuition assistance. You know, you really get into the depth of, uh, you know, I'll say total compensation. I, I feel we, we're right up there with just about any other uh, company or organization, you know, within our reach. So it's, it really is a good, um, opportunity. It's just, this is getting that message out and getting candidates to absorb it, you know, cause some people are motivated only by money, right? If they're just only motivated by dollars and cents and I'm respectful for that. I, I can, I can understand that. Um, there was a time I was too, you know, I'll go back to a younger version of John that out of school, that's probably the only thing I looked at, but now, you know, a guy with two kids and a family and, um, different things going on. I, I need the total cop. I need some flexibility. I need pay benefits, um, opportunities for advancement. And, you know, again, here that those exist and you don't have to look real far to see them. You really don't. The McCoy group has big value prop in my, in my thought, in my initial thinking, because of the, how dynamic it is with the opportunities that lend themselves to potential candidates or internal staff, obviously, you know, promoting within and actually paving that career path. Um, this, I think there was a study, it was 76% of, of, of employees now, you know, aren't necessarily leaving because of the pay to your point, but if there is opportunity within their current company. And if that is like a clear cut, whether they want to do it or not, but opportunity to advance and that, you know, from the outsider point of view, being able to express that, to bring folks into the sphere of the McCoy group is, is such a great tool to be able to use. And especially for your recruiters when they're speaking to these candidates, but I have to say the recruiters have to be quite dynamic in order to navigate these multitude of conversations, multitude of value propositions, whether it's the money, the own time, the pay, the, you know, there's, there's so many different um, layers within that. How do you balance that with your current team and be able for them to still communicate and deliver the messaging across the board for each individual candidate to understand it? Yeah, no, it, we work really hard at it, um, it within our, our department. So, it, to me, I use the word connected a lot mm -hmm. uh, with our team, and, and we stay connected. Um, and I think something that I take a ton of value from is just we have an 830 morning huddle with all uh, 12 teammates, essentially. And it's uh, it's a quick kind of headlines-only meeting where people will talk about something that they have going on within their, their work area. Um, and if they don't have anything to, to speak to in terms of a headline, uh, we'll also we'll, we'll say it's a small win. People can share you know, a small win that they have going on within their business unit or their, their work day or even on a personal level. So, you know, to me, it's stay connected, communicate, set expectations. You know, we really want to be transparent in terms of our opportunities across the board and then really work hard um, as a team. And I would hope and I think every teammate within our group would tell you we work very well together because there are examples where we may have somebody that applied for a job here in Dubuque, Iowa, for uh, a mechanics position, 
at our truck country dealership per se and, and say they have good experience, we're interested in them, but maybe maybe they can't work a certain shift or they need a certain certification to work for that business unit. We also have a, a shop in town for our food lighter uh, organization. So those two recruiters have to know each other's openings, their needs, um, so they can communicate, hey, I got a resource that maybe because of the schedule or, or skill and ability may not be a perfect fit for me, but might be a perfect fit for you. And so, you know, um, the team sits this right outside my door. When I hear those conversations going on, I, I'm proud because it means we're recruiting at a very high level. Yeah, in, in a sense, over communicate every in in every aspect, and having them all within you know one location is obviously a benefit. But over communication is something that we we discuss with our team constantly. Is you know having those huddles, over communicate as much as possible. There, in my mind, there's no such thing as too much information as long as it's you know pinpointed and we we, we stay stay on task, of course. Um, but over communication, especially with all that's that's involved, it gets critical across the board. Um, I want to I want to jump to retention. Retention very much is a two way relationship. Within the first ninety days, is typically in the in the trucking world was where we see a high turnover rate, and that does usually come down to the communication or the expectations that were maybe set or not set, more than likely. What have you found to significantly help reduce that that turnover rate, increase retention within the first onboarding 90 days of a new employee working for you? Yeah, no, it's, it's an ongoing battle. I, I take a lot of pride in our retention data, our numbers in terms of percentage. You know, we, we're lucky to have good, good retention stats compared to the industry, but um, for me, the retention battle really starts way before anybody's hired. Um, and so I, I have an opening within our team right now. And so I'll say like during that interview process, really vetting that candidate correctly, making sure we're communicating the opportunity that they're coming to. They understand all the gotta haves for the position. They understand the culture, the demands, you know, the good, bad, and ugly of the position. Um, so they know what they're getting into fully. You know, I think sometimes, we see what we want to see as hiring managers. And so to me, it's really important to, to properly vet and make sure that you're bringing that candidate in the door in good faith that, that they're going to be successful for long-term employment with your group. Now, now, once they're here, yeah, there's definitely something to be said of prepare yourself and your department for their first day, right? Make sure you have an agenda and a schedule and an orientation plan, um, an onboarding plan, uh, communicate with those departments. So you're setting up those you know, your IT groups, your HR teams, you're really creating a good alignment between all of your internal departments. So, so you're not surprising somebody, you know, in terms of, oh, I didn't realize I had an orientation today or, or somebody needs a, a, a password or an email address set up. I try to really be, you know, forecast ahead and, and plan what they need that first few days of employment with us. And then for me, you know, and there's not to talk bad about training videos and, and different things like there's there's reasons and, and we do them here and 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 that we should um, in terms of getting training content through video. But um, those to me have to be done um, in the right setting, the right the right um, serving size, if you will. You know, you can't put it not cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you put them in front of a computer for two days and walk away. Yes. That's that's going to lessen your ability and then also, you know, how much of that content are they absorbing at that point? And so, you know, we work hard to make sure we're balancing that. Um, and, and we're still working on getting where we need to be. And I think that's probably, probably a pain point, I think, for all organizations in terms of how do you keep them engaged, um, you know, during that onboarding orientation process. But, you know, I think, too, it comes down to uh, having ambassadors of your department, ambassadors of, of the workday. You know, being the new person for any company, any industry is awful. You know, you don't, sure. you don't know where the bathroom is. You don't know who you can joke with. You don't know where the vending machine oh, is. New school again, right? Yeah, it is. It's tough. And so, you know, to me, a smile goes a long way. We try to engage with our people, um, bring them in. Um, you know, the advice I'd give anybody listening to this or, or my team is be curious when you talk to people, your new people. You know, ask a lot of questions. You know, the best way to get them interested in your company or you is, is to really be authentically curious about them, you know, and let them share who they are and, and then try to, you know, put them in 
a position to be successful and early. And I tell people all the time, like I, I play it out in my mind and, and I think of like the kitchen table at home after somebody's first day where they go home and they're talking to their spouse or their family or the friend, whoever. And how was your first day? And they're like, well, I sat and watched videos all day and we couldn't get the computer working and, and I didn't talk to anybody. No one took me out to lunch. Yeah. No one checked in on me. I didn't even know it was time to leave. That's, that's not giving somebody a positive experience where if you can have them experience some type of small win before they go home for the day so they know, hey, okay, hey, I can come in tomorrow. I can check my emails or I can come in. I know where my truck's going to be parked and I know that it's going to be clean and ready for me and my trainer's going to be here waiting for me. Give them a reason to be excited um, to come in. And, and some of that might sound a little, I'll say fluffy, but it, it does matter to people. I think in here, if you're authentically interested in them coming back and, and you know, becoming, you know, a person that's going to help drive your business forward. You know, it, it's interesting. Yesterday, John, I was on a call with one of our clients. They have a 1,500 people in their organization, and they just hired on a new director. And so I was getting to know the director, and I said, has the first couple of days gone? And he goes, I have to be honest, everything has been so great. I showed up. My key card was working. The front desk was smiling. There was a little present on his desk. Um, people have been making the effort to take him out to lunch and he brought those as, 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 you know, kind of cheesy, but think he brought those up at an executive level, how that has transitioned it to make it an easier, better experience. And so lowering that, that bar, making someone feel comfortable from the get go. So I'm, I'm happy you just brought that up because that was just my conversation yesterday. And, and those are the little things. Those little things make a huge impact and they make a big difference so that when they're on the kitchen table talking to their family, they're excited about the next day. I also like what you said about, you know, the expectations between internal team and communication. Often we find, and regardless of the size of the, the organization, when let's say it's 10 drivers that are coming in to be, you know, goes through their training, they're not, they're not really clear on exactly who's going to be involved, what they're going to be doing, what the time looks like. And so we're a big believer in, in over communicating those expectations from the get go. And that starts in the recruiting process about exactly what does that look like for them if they were assigned with your company. And it just gives an opportunity for both parties to be clear on expectations. And then this way, something does you know, happen, which sometimes does in, in the world of people management, we go back to the expectations that everyone's on the same page about what they agreed upon as they come in. So um, I, I absolutely love what you said there. Yeah, and I, I would uh, underestimate the small details, even what door to use, where to park. You know, exactly. I mean, it's it's unfortunately some, some markets, if people can't find the right parking spot, they'll just go home. And so we want to make sure people have you know, good understanding on, on the, really the fundamental, the entry level, or maybe small details, but, but they do. And you let those people kind of stack, I'll say small wins through their first day and feel good about, you know, the arrival and the engagement and, and being able to ask a question, you know, during that process. And, and we've done a good job. Our HR team here has done a really good job of organizing expectations of what to bring on your first day, what will we expect out of you, what you'll receive, um, and I'm a checklist guy, you know, I'm one that I, I, I remember my first day I had, I had the list out, I'm checking the stuff off. So I was set up for success. And, um, so I mean, I think giving people the proper information, setting them up for success, I think is really what it comes down to. I love small wins. Small wins end up being the biggest win as they compile time. Out, and, and it just brings up the energy of the entire group and, and the personnel that's, that's coming on board. Um, I did want to ask, you know, we mentioned slightly in the recruiting phase, you know, automation, discuss training videos, and I think we have similar philosophies around that. We need them. We need to adopt them. But with the involvement of technology and automation in today's mar market, how do you balance what you're going to integrate within your company and know what could help eliminate manual tasks that can be automated? Um, or still have that personal approach. I'd love to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, so we have a, uh, 
uh, we call it a talent outreach office at one of our um, local colleges here in the Dubuque area. And uh, one of the things we do is we look at the balance between automation and the human element to reviewing resumes. You know, and you think of digital keyword search, search engine optimization, things of that nature. Um, I go back and forth. We, we have a high, high volume of, of applicants here, which is a great problem to have. I'm, I'm happy to celebrate that. But thing, but we do have to lean on automation to look through some of those uh, candidates. Um, and the same, but we can't be so programmed that we're not willing to put our own two eyes on a piece of paper or on an application to understand because, you know, not everybody is great at writing a resume or filling out an application. So it's one of those things we can't always just make hiring decisions based on that. So it definitely is a balance. Um, and I think that it, it changes based on need, based on timing, based on available resources, you know, um, but we, we try to do a very diligent job in making sure, again, I go back to measurement, measurement of your KPIs, measurement of any program you're going to have. It's, and go into that new process, whether it be a human, uh, you know, interaction or some type of automation, but have a idea in mind of how you're going to measure success. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just kind of, you're just kind of running, right? You don't know, did you get where you wanted? Did you accomplish what you wanted? Is it, is it, is it, you know, are you going to judge success off of time or savings or number of hires? And, and so really, yeah, I think, I think it's a hard question to give you a really, really detailed answer other than really be prepared to measure and, and, and then react. You know, I think of measure your things, then how do you tweak things? Maybe it's small changes or maybe they're big changes, but how are you going to measure and then make changes and tweak things to, to drive, you know, results for, for the process you're trying to leverage? Yeah, and if that's a that's a great answer, and I know that's one of those questions. There's a lot of layers to it, and um, we're a big fan of automation, automation, certain aspects of the recruiting process because it frees up the recruiter's time in many regards to have more better conversations, or lack of better words, with candidates versus screening through a thousand resumes. Um, reviewing the resumes, reviewing these specific platforms, and just putting it into a streamlined approach. And so I do with our industry, we have some companies that are adopting it. Some get a little nervous still about it, but there's small ones that you can do with automation to help accelerate the hiring process. And um, that's something that we, we, we love to introduce because it, again, just accelerates the time on the back end for the office staff. So let's talk about re recognitions or third R of the day. Um, how do you cultivate appreciation, engagement, loyalty, especially with, you know, food liner, for example, drivers are out there on the road every day. Um, how do you demonstrate appreciation to make them feel valued? Yeah, you know, a couple of things come to mind. I, I think soft skills is a big thing that is, mm -hmm. as a as an industry, we need to get better at, you know, in terms of soft skills. I remember having conversations with hiring managers in the past and only really prioritizing technical ability and, and not worrying about soft skills. And, and in today's world, you know, we do try to really embrace and train and educate, you know, our are all of our staff members and create an aligned focus. You know, you think about the driver, we really try to make sure there's good alignment from recruiting to the fleet manager, to the terminal manager, to the regional manager, to the VP. Mm -hmm. So we really have that aligned focus. Um, we're setting those people up for success and what of them may be, how do they want to be recognized? And, and for us, we try to promote and reward the behavior we want to see more of. So certainly there's, there's safety incentives and performance incentives and, and loyalty incentives. You know, one of the things I'm really proud of that the Food Liner and Quest Liner groups offer is loyalty programs based on your years of service with us. So, you know, again, we, we want people to stay around. You know, we want people to, to be safe and productive, but we want a, a tenured um, fleet in terms of our, our drivers. And so we really try to reward things through loyalty programs. You know, the other thing I would just say, think of the soft skills, you know, be an authentic in your approach to people as well. Like when you have a conversation, be listening, be curious, be authentic, understand what motivates people, um, I think is really going to help 
recognize, you know, that, that we care about them and, and, and their well being and want them to win here, but also in their, in their personal life. So, you know, I think, I think when you get into different things, that's kind of a culmination of things that we, we offer and, and promote, um, you know, through our, through our different networks. And again, it just comes back to try to promote and recognize that behavior we want to continue to see more of. And, and loyalty certainly is one. And, and again, lucky to be at a group where, you know, we just had a, a terminal manager meeting here um, last Friday and we had all of our terminal managers, a regional manager staff here and to collaborate, you know, on where we're at this year and things we're hoping to accomplish in the next uh, yeah, remaining part of the year. And, you know, a common theme is, you know, be authentic with your people, understand mm-hmm. what they need. And, and, you know, you, you can almost predict, um, I'll say turnover sometimes if you're not recognizing and rewarding um, people and, and you know, I'll say go back to basic, basic stuff. When you do that stuff, try to do it, you know, from the tallest mountain, so to speak, and, and give people that praise publicly in front of their peers, you know, if it's possible. And, and uh, you know, it's there's just a lot of ways to do it. And it's it's there's no silver ball with it. Everybody's motivated different. So, you know, that's where I go back to be curious, listen to your people, be authentic, understand what they look at as a reward. Because you may be spending time, money, and energy and what you think is a reward, but may not be all that important to the individual you're working with. That is full circle right there from recruiting and in, in understanding what certain pe- what motivates certain people to maybe apply to your position or to join your company to all the way down, you know, full circle to, to recognition, you know, what motivates that person to stay and feel, feel proud to work for your company. And it comes down to really understanding each unique person and what motivates them, you know, full, full scope so that they're professionally fulfilled and then personally fulfilled. Um, John, I know one more question for you. What would you say is probably the most important lesson that you've learned in your career so far? Well, there's been a lot, uh, you know, for sure. Um, yeah, I think just listening, you know, listening and, and being willing to um, challenge your, your teammates, challenge yourself. You know, I, I am a, I'm a competitive person and, you know, I learned a long time ago, you got to, you got to kind of humble yourself a little bit and, and be willing to accept feedback from your peers, your teammates, um, your colleagues. And uh, as long as it's putting you and, and your company in a better spot, you have to kind of remove your ego sometimes from some situations and, and be willing to learn and em- embrace different thoughts and ideas and change, you know, and I've been lucky to been trusted to lead a couple of different teams in my career. And, you know, I think of when we're trying to build a group here, it's, it's, um, it really comes down to finding the pieces that fit together. Um, I, I have a certain, I'll say skill set, And, uh, so when we look for, uh, to, uh, somebody to add to our team, I don't need another John. I already have one. Right. So we want to try to find somebody that is, has brings different skills to, uh, you know, what I could potentially do for a group. And so I guess, you know, be, be willing to embrace thoughts and changes and ideas that maybe are yours, you know, and, and, and really embrace those. And, and maybe it's a combination of your thought and a teammate's thought that ultimately puts you in a, you know, the best possible position for your company. So I think just embracing new ideas and, and being, being willing to, to be humble. Yeah, I absolutely love that. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I know my listeners are going to find it very valuable with the, the all that we discussed around recruiting, retention, and recognition. Um, if you're a driver, diesel technician, or interested in learning more about the McQuaid Group and the 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 five umbrella of companies underneath them, I will have their information in the show notes below. Um, that concludes another episode of Attention Retention. And again, John, thank you so much. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Remember, the road to success begins with effective recruitment, thoughtful retention, and genuine recognition. Please feel free to share this knowledge with your peers and industry colleagues. Your sharing can make a difference, and together we can empower the industry to thrive. Until next time.